Alito, Jim Achukna, this is Chief Steve coming at y'all with another one, another episode of True Story. Now, before we get into it, make sure that you guys hit that like button. Every time y'all hit the like button, it helps the algorithm catch on and we get more eyes and ears to this channel. So hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so whenever I drop these bombs, you'll be the first one to catch them. All right, we're going back into the archives, y'all. I'm really excited to show this book to y'all. I'm going to be getting into some good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, y'all. If y'all haven't heard already from my introduction, uh, my kids are up and they are really loud. So uh, <laughs> we're going to do the best we can on this one. But Halito, here we are once again in the archives. I found this very interesting book. This is The Question of Aborigines and the Law and Practice of Nations, including a collection of authorities and documents by Alpheus Henry Snow, 1959 and 1920, United States Department of uh, State. And this publication date was in 1919. All right. So really interesting. We're just going to go ahead and get forward into it. Um, the title is basically self-explanatory. So this first chapter mostly deals with the definition of Aborigines. We're going to read a couple of pages and then we're going to make a whole series out of this one. So y'all strap in and uh, get ready because yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a pretty interesting ride. All right. So without further ado, let's get on up here. We're going to start at chapter one. The question of Aborigines and the law and practice of nations chapter one definition of aborigines just so we can make it clear all right here we go so far as the author of this report has been able to discover no definition of the word aborigines has a as a term of the law and practice of nations has been made by any text writer of recognized standing or by an international body whose usage would determine its meaning. It therefore becomes necessary to formulate such a definition from an examination of the meaning attached to the word by lexicographers and by a study of the context of public documents of recognized authority in the law and practice of nations in which the word is used so they haven't had a proper legal definition of aborigine uh, to this point which is in uh, around 1919 and now they're going to do their best to describe what a aborigine is what aborigines are what an aboriginal is um, via the information and stuff that's out already so this is history literally unfolding within these pages all right the following definition formulated in that matter is adopted for the purposes of this report aborigines are the members of uncivilized tribes which inhabit a region at the time a civilized state extends its sovereignty over the region and which have so inhabited from time immemorial and also the uncivilized descendants of such persons d dwelling in the region. Okay, so that's their, that's their definition formulated for this report. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go, before we even move forward, we're going to go into uh, what civilized means. Civilized and uncivilized. All right, so let's pause for the cause and we're going to get into the definition. Hey, y'all, just be sure that you guys hit that like button. We need y'all to hit that like button. It's very important, especially if you're hanging with us and you've been rocking with us for a while. Hit that like button so that we can get more eyes and ears to this channel. All right. It really helps the algorithm and it really helps me in getting this true story out here. All right. And if you're new to the channel again, subscribe because we got more coming. All right. We're going to go ahead and move forward with the presentation here. 
All right, y'all. So this is the um, definition according to the Oxford languages of civilized. Civilized being an adjective meaning at an advanced stage of social and cultural development. Okay, so this is social and cultural, social and cultural. So they're comparing civilized and uncivilized compared to their standards of what their society and their culture is. All right. So let's just go ahead and get that, get that in the frontal lobe for you guys because you know I know when we hear civilized and uncivilized we think oh somebody's civilized that means that they know how to act you know what I mean or, or it has something to do with their demeanor or their manner or something like that but no nah, this is just how you fit within the social and cultural environment of wherever you are okay so that's what civilized similar things is enlightened educated advanced developed cultured you know, so those are your similar synonyms or however you want to say it. But uh, that's civilized, okay? And that just shows educated. Educated, huh? So is education really a part of, you know, a, a formidable knowing or, or having a, a, a academia? Is that is that a social and cultural thing? rather than it just being a necessity or, or some kind of, you know, because one can have a high education within one culture or society, but then be deemed uneducated in some ways, according to another, right? So you got to gotta watch out for that. They're telling you what this is right in your face. All right, so we're going to look up what uncivilized is as well. So let's pause for the cause. We're going to get to that. Alrighty, y'all. So here's the moral definition. What a moral definition. Well, technically, yeah. But um, here's the Oxford languages definition for uncivilized. And that is an adjective as well, meaning of a place or people not considered to be socially, culturally, or morally advanced. They pitied us for leaving the smoke for such uncivilized remoteness. So in this, we're going to be talking about when they say uncivilized, they're talking from a socially and cultural, from a social and cultural standpoint, because as you know, as the colonizers came and they colonized a new standard of society and culture was being implanted and a lot of us during this time was not adapting fully to the society or the culture of which they were uh, in which they were basically um, <laughs> implementing colonizing you know so not a lot of us adapted to the colonizer. So that's what they mean by uncivilized. All right. So we could be, we have our own society. We got our own, we got our own culture. We got our own social standards. So even today, you know, as copper colored Aborigines, we can still be deemed as uncivilized to some that have a colonizer mindset. All right, so don't take that. It is an insult, but know how it's being used. Know what they're saying when they say what they say. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move forward to the book. Hey, again, y'all, reminding y'all again, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let's go ahead and get this channel pumped up we're currently at 560 plus members and i appreciate each and every one of y'all but let's continue to grow this channel because i know it can get even bigger this community can get bigger and stronger so let's do our part and let's continue to get this true story out here all right let's go on and move with the presentation 
All right, y'all, moving on. As a term of the law and practice of nations, Aborigines is primarily a term of that division of the general public law, which is not strictly national or strictly international, and which is concerned with the relations between a state recognized as one of the civilized states and uncivilized tribes under its sovereignty. Aborigines are distinguished from colonists, the latter term including the citizens of civilized states, okay, who settle in that region. Settlers, so we are going by the settlers' standards, not the ones who originally inhabited, not the people who are the, 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 the empire that was already here. Not the, not the people who have already built what was already here. We're going by settlers' standards. And we really we understand that a lot of these settlers that came through here were once deemed criminals. And a lot of them were, you know, rejects of their form of society, which is why they wanted to leave and find other places because they weren't making it. In their, in their current society, wherever they came from. So they came out here for work, new, new opportunities and stuff. All right. So we're going by these guys' sets and standards. Just, just letting y'all know, putting some context to it. The relations of Aborigines which each, with each other, with the colonists, and with the colonizing states are necessarily su- subject to a special regime Um, established by the colonizing state for the purpose of fitting the aborigines for civilization. So they're trying to adapt us into their culture and their standards of society and opening the resources of the land to the use of the civilized world. Okay, so everything that's all according to their culture and standards, societal standards. All civilized states which assume sovereignty over the re- over regions inhabited by Aborigines undertake a civilizing work which, while verifying in its details, is identical in its general nature and in the fundamental principles to be applied. Hence the dealings of individual civilized states with Aborigines under their respective sovereignties are matters of common interest to all nations and the law and practice of nations properly concerns itself with the common and international aspects of such national action. So everybody is interested in making the aboriginal, the original inhabitants of these places, of these regions, adaptable to their society and their cultural standards. That way they can manipulate them. That way they can put them under their rule fully as, you know, a sovereign, uh, a so-called sovereign state. They're trying to make a oversee us, if you will. <laughs> y'all, y'all forget my kids, y'all. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to go into these definitions here. Meaning a meaning of the word as shown by an examination of lexicons. The word Aborigines is, of course, the Latin word Aborigines taken over without change into the English language. The history and meaning of the word in Latin are given in the Latin English lexicon by E.A. Andrews as follows. The Aborigines, the nation which, previous to historical record, descended from the Apennines and advancing from... Carcioli and Rate or Rate uh, into the plain drove out the Siculi, the ancestors of the Romans. So this is Aborigines according to their specific region of where they were, you know, they came from. To them, as not of Greek origin, but the young Greek element in the Latin language, uh, so so on and so forth. And then it says its etymology is doubtful. It is commonly derived from Aborigo, Uh, but according to Arthur Victor, it is either of Greek origin from yada and yada, I don't know how to speak Greek, 
those who came from the mountains or Aberare, um, the wanderers, which last the revelation or derivation fe uh, fest, also page 16 approves. Okay, so that's all according to their to their standard of um, uh, what was that E. A. Andrews lexicon, right? But it's the Webster's Dictionary, which is we're more familiar with, it says right here, Aborigines, Latin, Aborigines, or Ab and Origo, um, especially in the first inhabitants of Latium, uh, those who originally Aborigine inhabited Latium or Italy, okay, the first inhabitants of, of, of a country. So uh, they're, like I said, they're, they're putting their, the people within their respective regions so these are they, they let you know like these are people who are originally inhabitants of a country they're they're the first inhabitants of a country so that's the main part that you need to realize right there when we call ourselves aborigines we are calling ourselves the first inhabitants of the land of the country all right and it says the same dictionary defines aboriginal used as a substan uh, substantive as an original inhabitant, one of the aborigines, okay? And the adjective aboriginal as meaning first, original, primitive, as the aboriginal tribes of America, okay? And we'll go ahead and look at the definition of primitive too, because I know a lot of people get, they get irky, irky and irked up when they hear primitive because it, it makes you sound like, you know, whatever, like it's a taboo or something. So we're going to go into the proper definition of what primitive actually means. We're going to pause for the cause yet again and get on into that definition. Again, y'all go ahead and like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and move forward to the definition. All right, so here's the proper definition of primitive it says relating to, denoting, or preserving the character of an early stage in the evolutionary or historical development of something. Okay, so that's what they mean by primitive. We were the character of the early stage of the evolution of the historical development of our, our, our land. So basically the blueprint all right the blueprint so that being said let's go ahead and move forward to the book all right the century dictionary thus defines aborigines as the first inhabitants of a country applied especially to the aboriginal inhabitants of latium uh, the ancestors of the Roman people, the primitive inhabitants of a country, the people living in a country at the earliest period of which anything is known, which means when we call ourselves Aborigines, we are saying that we have been here uh, before they even knew that we were here. We've been here, okay? Way before Columbus, way before any kind of settlement, before anything, we were already here, okay? Way before the, the, the Bering Strait became the Bering Strait, before land bridges and all that stuff was even cross crossable, we were already here, all right? Marinate on that. The same dictionary defines the adjective aboriginal as pertaining to aborigines, hence primitive, simple, uh, unsophisticated. It says the following are meanings applied to the word and some of its derivatives by the Oxford Dictionary. So you see, they try to throw shade, you know, unsophisticated, okay? Aborigines, a purely Latin word applied to those who are believed to have been the inhabitants of a country. Aborigine, i.e. from the beginning. From the beginning, the original inhabitants of a country originally the race of the first possessors of Italy and Greece, which is, you know, in their respective areas, afterwards extended to races supposed to be the first or original occupants of other countries. So this was originally given to the Italians to, 
to the ancient Italians and the ancient Grecians, okay? And then they use this word to basically describe all of the original inhabitants all over the country. So the Aborigine, Aboriginal is honestly a given name. You know, you can even say that, you know, they were, that's what they named us or that's what, you know, and I know a lot of people, they say, oh, they gave us the name Indian and, and all this, but we have so many words in our indigenous language that, especially in the Algonquin and the Ojibwe, um, that refer to Indian. And then also, if you've studied, uh, some of my content and so Salinas, shout out to him, he shows that before Columbus even got here, this was known as India. This place was known as India. So India is the land of the Indians, okay? America was known as India before Hindustan was called in, uh, India in the uh, 20th century, in, in the 19th. Uh, 40s okay so you got to understand when we say we are Indians we are referring to the old land referring to the the original name referring to India okay that's that's who we are all right so but this Aboriginal Aborigines this is something that came later. This came after Indians. Okay. This is something that they named us. Based, this was originally for the Italians and the Greeks, the, the Greeks, the Romans. You know, now that they came over to this side, now we're starting to be known as Aborigines and Aboriginals. Okay, and that, and they have their little shades and the definitions and stuff, which lets you know that. You know, if you're considered an Aborigine, an Aboriginal, you know, you're not on the same level culturally or uh, or socially when it comes to dealing with the colonizer, dealing with the foreigner, okay? So even when we call ourselves and label ourselves as Aboriginals, when we label ourselves as American Indians, which are the original inhabitants, and which they know as, in, uh, not Indian, but they know as Aborigines, and even when they call the, the the indigenous people of Australia Aborigines, they are distinctly giving a putting distinctly putting the original people in another class than them, and that class is usually subpar to who they are. All right, but we know being an Aboriginal, being an Aborigine. Being an indigenous person, being the original person, there's no, there's no shame in that. If anything, there's pride in knowing that you are the first, you are the original, right? You are the beginning. All right, so let's move on. Let's move forward. The natives found in possession of a country by Europeans have gone thither as colonists. Aborigin, aborigin. Uh, a form occasionally occurring as a singular to Aborigines, um, which has no singular in Latin. But the tendency is to treat Aborigines as purely English word, as a purely English word, and make the singular Aborigine. Aboriginal adjective, first or earliest so far as history or science gives record, primitive, strictly native, strictly native, huh? Indigenous, use both of races and natural features of various lands, okay? So strictly native, not just native, or native, you know, it's, it's strictly native, right? So this is, means you, 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 don't, you don't come from anywhere else. You are strictly from where you are, okay? And... I don't hear nobody calling anybody strictly Native Americans. I'm just saying. But here we are. Indigenous. Used both of races and natural features of various lands. Okay? 
The second one, dwelling in any country before the arrival of later European colonists, which means we did not come here on a boat in 1619. We were already here. Okay? We were not brought here in the 1400s. We were already on this land. We saw the boats coming in. We welcomed them in. We fed them. We sheltered them. And in return, they did what a colonizer does. Okay? Of or pertaining to Aborigines to the earliest known inhabitants or to native races. Okay? An original B, an original inhabitant of any land, original inhabitant of any land, now usually as distinguished from subsequent European colonists. All right? Which means we are not like the European colonists. We are not like the descendants of their of the European colonists. We are the descendants of the original inhabitants of this land. We are different from them. Aboriginalism, the due recognition of native races. Okay? When we say native, this isn't referring to what is the term of native today. Or native, strictly native. As you saw further from up there, strictly native, which means no migrations needed. We have already been here. We are strictly native to this land, strictly the original inhabitants. Okay? The New Standard Dictionary gives the following definitions Aborigines, the original or earliest known inhabitants of a country, right? The primeval Romans, like I said, there a lot of the, this word refers to, in its essence, it refers to the people on their side, the people out in that area, the Romans, the Grecians, the Italians. This is a foreign word. Aboriginal, of or, of or pertaining to the Aborigines, native to the soil, savage in respect of culture. See? This is since this is their word, they're able to put all these bullshit definitions or bullshit, uh, you know, uh, characteristics and traits to the definition of this word. You know, so you really want to is, is Aborigine and Aboriginal, according to this, should be considered like a slur, you know, in some ways. According to how they're how they're throwing it at us, you know what I mean. It, but you know, indigenous, primitive, hence simple, unsophisticated. You see this? Aboriginalism, the doctrine that savage races may be civilized. The doctrine. So Aboriginalism is a doctrine. So this is like. This is basically like calling yourself a part of a religious cult. The doctrine that savage races may be civilized and hence should be respected. Okay, so now you call yourself an aboriginal, you call yourself an aborigine in their eyes, even though they look at you as something less, they still... Uh, they, they still think that you should be respected because you are the first inhabitants. It's a catch-22. And I personally don't have a problem with using the word aborigine, aboriginal. You know, in this now in this day and age, you have to have something that distinguishes. But at the same time, you need to overstand where these words come from and why they use the words that they use. Okay? still be proud of being the first inhabitants but understand when you claim your indigeneity when you claim your aboriginality they are looking at you different from them and in a lot of ways that difference according to them is something that although it should be respected it is something that they like to throw their tropes at and who's been catching more strays than any since the beginning, since since the colonists 
came out here has been our people. The ones that's been reclassified over and over and over again. You hear me? So with that, y'all know who the Aborigines are. Y'all know who they consider the Aborigines. They consider Aboriginal. Alright? Aborigine, rare. One of the Aborigines. Aborigine, singular form of Aborigines, which in Latin has no singular, as some from regarding the word as English and now often used. Okay? So this is the meaning of the word as shown by official documents. It says from the for, from the foregoing survey of the work of the lexicographers, the lexicographers, it is evident that the lexicons furnish little aid toward the formulation of a scientific definition of Aborigines as a term of the law and practice of nations. So they don't have a uh, at this point they didn't have a a, a legal definition. Okay of what an aborigine is. This was nothing more than a than a than a a, a word that they used that had tropes attached to it. And now they're trying to make it legit in the sense of you're uncivilized, you're primitive to the culture, you're not you're not a part of our society, you're not a part of our culture. So this, we're gonna give you this this trope, we're gonna give you this this name here, this title, so that we can show that you know, you have the potential of being civilized. You have a potential of being grafted in or adapted into our society and culture, even though we've done our best to basically erase yours from this land and establish, to establish ours. You know what I mean? So, I mean, let's let's speak on it. it. Says it therefore becomes necessary to study the usage of the word in legal and political literature. Such a study apparently reveals that the establishment of the word as a legal and political term with the precise meaning occurred in the period between 1835 and 1837. So this, there was no definition or there was no such thing as an Aboriginal out here until 1835 to 1837. It is a new word. By then, they already they already knew us as Indians and they had already recategorized us, reclassified us rather, as Negroes, okay, we were already given the Negro um, classification, but then they knew that we were. Now they, they're saying these are Aborigines, these are Aboriginals, okay, and this is what they put in their political literature and their legal definition, their legal terms, while keeping us away from our originality. From our indigeneity, keeping us away from from claiming our inheritance and our heritage, because during this time, 1800s, what was happening? You know, there's a whole lot of stuff was going on during this time, which included, you know, the lynchings of our people and and the destroying of our of our communities and and the persecution of our people, especially those who had claimed their indigene their indigeneity that did not, you know, because 1835, 1837, what was happening? The removal. This is this is during and a little bit after the Indian Removal Act. They were already taking our land away from us. They were stripping us of our identity. They had already stripped us of our identity and then they started moving us away from our land. They started moving, taking our land away from us during this time. And now they're saying now that these people have been removed from their land, basically, and and those who have been reclassified, their, their identities erased. These people have the potential to be a civilized people now. They have the potential to be uh, respected in the standards of our society and our culture. All right. So this is where this legal political term came up with this precise meaning. It occurred in the period between 1835 and 1837 under the following circumstances. Under these following circumstances, through the efforts 
of a series of reform organizations in Great Britain. Okay, so Great Britain was the one that made this term. This term was given to us by Britain, the first of which began its operations in 1791. 1791 is a year after the first census. That's an FYI. So that's when race and everything started becoming a thing. And this is after we've been, as we were uh, given the title Negro, we were classified for the first time um, in the 1600s. And then the census came out in the 1700s, late 1700s, the first census. Okay. And it says the African slave trade was prohibited by the citizens of Great Britain by Act of Parliament in 1807 and in 1833. African slavery was abolished in the British colonies. All right. So, and we already know what the African African slave trade and all that stuff is. You realize what Africans, Afrikaners, the Dutch, the German, you know, we know who these people really were. It was told, you know, it was told to us the wrong way. And then on top of that, when our people were being kidnapped and taken to the breaking grounds and was taken, they, they either took us to Europe or they took us to Africa through Europe or they took us back to the mainland from the islands to the mainland and from the mainland to the islands and reclassified us as what? As Africans. As basically one of them. As a slave. Okay? Because Africa was not called Africa originally. And if you ask anyone that is of a, you know, elderly age or some that, you know, the original inhabitants of uh, so of the, of the continent, I'm just going to call it the continent of the continent. You got different tribes with different vibes, different tongues and different languages that knows the continent by different names and definitions according to their to their indigenous tongue. OK, so to call it Africa, you can't really call it Africa like that because somebody in Nigeria knows it is something different. Somebody in Tanzania knows it is something different. Somebody in, you know, uh Kenya knows it's something different. So in South Africa knows it's something different. It's not originally called Africa. That was not its original name. Neither is Alkabulan. Alkabulan is an is a Saudi uh, is an Ara- is Arabic is an Arabian uh, uh, term. You know, it's an Arabic term. So you, you gotta you know if you want to do that dig and do get that research for that. The proper name of the continent of which it was I mean hey that's up to you but we knew that our continent was India our and our continent was known as India Superior you know particularly in our region India Superior but India you have the West Indies we we are India okay India is the land of the Indians but anyway African slavery was abolished in the British colonies. During this long period of agitation, okay, these reformers had been led to study the whole question of the contact of the civilized states with the uncivilized races. Okay, and why would they bring the African slavery up during this time? We're talking about aborigines, you know. Just something, to, just something to ponder. It says Great Britain was exercising sovereignty over regions inhabited by uncivilized races in Canada, what? South America, uh, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and the islands of the Pacific, other European states, the United States, and the states of South America exercised similar sovereignty. Okay. In spite of the varying details in dealing with each of the uncivilized tribes, it was perceived that the problem was one of the contact of civilization with uncivilization. 
that there were certain general principles universally applicable and that the question was in some respects and to some extent one of common interest to all nations. So basically they're trying to see how can we make these uncivilized people civilized? How can we take these people who are not accustomed to our society and our, and our culture and make them a part of our society and our culture? Okay. Influenced by this broader aspect of the question, a part of the anti-slavery group in 1835 separated itself from the rest and formed themselves into a society which called itself the British and Foreign Aborigines Protection Society. So it just tells, tells you right there that these colonists are not aborigines of any place. And they were establishing, they were, they were, they were enslaving aborigines. They were putting aborigines, uh, according to them, they were enslaving aborigines, okay? And so we know that slavery is nothing but forced labor. They were kidnapping prisoners of war, okay? So the remainder continuing their general anti-slavery propagandist work as propagandist work as a society calling itself the British and Foreign Anti-Slavery Society. Okay, so this is they, they two of the same thing, basically. These two societies kept their separate identity and continuously carried on their work on their separate lines until 1909 when they merged into one by the name of the British Anti-Slavery and Aborigines Protection Society which still exists, okay? So Britain, they, they're, in so many words, Britain's hands are all over this. You want to talk about who created race, who created, you know, it was Britain. Britain did this, okay? It's nobody else to blame but Britain. That's the reason why you have black, you got white, you got the aborigines, you got all these different classifications, and categorize the categorization of different identities because of Great Britain. By the influence of the Aborigines Protection Society, the question of Aborigines and the law and practice of nations was agitated in 1835 in the British House of Commons and largely through the influence of Thomas Fowle Buxton, who was a member of the House of Commons and one of the leaders of the society. A select committee on the subject was appointed after taking a large amount of evidence. This committee, which received the name of the Select Committee on Original Tribe or Aboriginal Tribes, made its report in 1837. Gladstone was a member of the committee, and it is said that he drafted the report. It was by this report, apparently, the word that the word Aborigines was received or Aborigines received its definite sanction as a term of the law and practice of nations. See? So, Aborigines received its definite sanction as a term of the law and practice of nations. So, this is all when you... It's all a part of their game. It's just all a part of the game. It's just another means and ways to separate us from them. But now you're separating us from you and putting policy behind it, which means now that you are labeled this, I can treat you the way that I want to treat you according to the law. And in judicial decisions and diplomatic and legislative documents prior to that time, the word is used sporadically and in a sense, not invariably. Though generally confined to uncivilized persons in indigenous soil, as to, um, to uncivilized persons indigenous to the soil, I'm sorry, of a certain region. Okay, so and then we knew that those certain re regions at a point in time was the Greek and Greece, Italy, Rome, those areas. And then once they started colonizing over here. They started using this sporadically over here, but they mostly used, and, and that's what I, I showed y'all in the book, they mostly used Indian. Then they used, outside of Indian, they did use 
Aborigine or Aboriginals. That's why you have so many books going back to those times when they made full on, you know, in the 18, especially during the 1800s. And these are a lot of these archive books. They meant they call us Aboriginals or Aborigines. Okay, that's literally the distinct. To distinctly dis, uh, describe us from them. Okay. This report clearly confined it as a legal term to this case. Though. And it says by the terms. So after this was done. This was a legal term. It was set in stone. So by the terms of the resolution of the House of Commons. The committee was authorized to consider. What measures ought to be adapted with regard to the native inhabitants of countries where British settlements are made and to the neighboring tribes in order to secure them or to secure to them the due observance of justice and the protection of their rights. Okay, so supposedly it's to protect. We have rights under the term Aborigine now or Aboriginal because now that we're adapting to their society and their culture. We got a we got a leg up now. We got a we got a uh, a title. We have an identity in their culture and their society. So now uh, we have we have rights and we have the observance of justice and the protection of their rights. Okay, the protection of our rights. So uh, yeah, Aboriginal rights to promote the spread of civilization among them. See to promote the so that's. So this is like a list. So for one, the first thing is, um, the first thing is we have due observance of justice and the protection of of rights. Second thing is to promote the spread of civilization among them, among the Aboriginal people. So now that you're an Aboriginal, now now we got the term Aboriginal, now it's time to basically be put into the society okay so now you're recognized as somebody that's uncivilized now we got the right to civilize you promote civilization you know promote the civil to be civilized promote you to be civilized basically okay and so it says and to lead them to the peaceful and voluntary reception of the Christian religion that's what it really was all about. That's what that's what they meant by civilizing us. That's exactly what they meant by civilizing us. Giving us religion. That was the main key of civilizing us. And what people do you know that are hardcore Christians to the core? The Aboriginal people, the copper-colored Aborigines, to be exact. Okay, and yeah, Christianity has been spread all over. Everybody and their mama, for the most part, unless they have a distinctive culture or something else that's different. But for the most part, your quote-unquote so-called black folks out here today on Turtle Island, yeah. A lot of them folks, not the majority of them, the majority of them, the majority of us <laughs> are Christian people. We have been indoctrinated into the Christian religion. There's been some that made it out. There's some that, you know, have found the, uh, the Hebrew ways through Christianity and you know have have gone to a more you know distinguished sector or you know practicing what they feel is their roots and you know hey that's it is what it is but know that the basis of civilization the way that they promoted the spread of civilization and they did it they've been doing it way long before and now it's just policy and law it's through Christianity. It's through religion. They've been sending their missionaries out here. Missionary and mercenaries are interchangeable, one and the same. 
They've been sending their missionaries out here way long before anything was established of theirs. That was, that was them planting their flag in the name of Christianity. And now, now that they have a proper title to give to us, now they have the right, now it's legally. Great Britain has made it legal. After the doc- doctrine of discovery, of course, and now Britain has taken the helm and has made it policy to promote the spread of civilization by leading to the peaceful and voluntary reception of Christianity. And then we're going to close with this. In the second report, or second paragraph of the report, it is said, the extent of the question will be best comprehended by taking a survey of the globe and by observing over how much of its surface and intercourse with Britain may become the greatest blessing or the heaviest scourge. It will scarcely be denied in word that as an enlightened and Christian people, we are at least bound to do the, to the inhabitants of other lands, whether enlightened or not, as we should in similar circumstances desire to be done by which means they're going to do whatever the fuck they want to do whether you want to be what they want you to be or not but beyond the obligations of common honesty we are bound by two considerations with regard to the uncivilized first that of the ability we possess to confer upon them the most important benefits and secondly that of their inability to resist any encroachments, however unjust, however mischievous, mischievous, which we may dispose to make. So they're doing that. Once they labeled you, labeled us this, they feel like they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. They feel like they're going to rather and and they got all authority and they are in their God given right to do so as Christian people. As an as enlightened and Christian people to do whatever the fuck they want to do to you, rather no matter how unjust, no matter how mischievous, mischievous, uh, and whichever, however they want to do it. And what are they doing to our people today? What are we always hollering for? We want justice. We want justice. And then they say, oh yeah, as you know. Y'all deserve justice and we won't get justice, but whatever, whenever they decide to get their point across, whenever they want to do something, what it, they always do it in an unjust or mischievous way, don't they? Which they may dispose to make. The disparity of the parties, strength of the one and the incapacity of the other to enforce the observance of their rights constitutes a new and irresistible appeal to our compassionate protection. So it's it's ugh, it's like it's like an abuser. It's like an abuser. Like we'll protect you. We'll we'll give you we'll respect you and as long as you do what we tell you to do. And if you don't do what we tell you to do, or even if you do do what we tell you to do, we may do whatever we want to you in order to make sure that you're protected. Under our compassionate protection. <laughs> Man. So on that note, we're going to stop this video. We're going to stop this uh, episode. And we're going to uh, definitely more to come. Um, but yeah, it's just something to marinate on. The term Aborigine, Aboriginal goes deep. You know. It's not as old as people think it is, but at the same time, its meaning is there's layers to it. It's levels to it, as you can see. But um, I thank you guys for rolling with me so far. Like I said, like this video. Really like get a thumbs up because there's a lot of people that don't know what Aboriginal really means. What Aborigine, what, what it is to me, it be an Aborigine. You know, so let's bring this awareness to our people and to others by sharing, 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 sharing. Gotta share this video, like this video, 
especially if you made it all the way to this point like this video i don't even know how long we've been going but like this video and if you're new make sure you subscribe we are back in the archives baby we are back in the books and we are getting down into the nitty gritty okay so definitely more to come until then tatakista i cherish y'all and yokoki thank you for watching we'll see you next time